in this in this kingdom we rise by knowledge please understand this we do not rise just by desire we do not rise just by intention we rise by knowledge just because you are tired of staying where you are just because you are tired of standing before a closed door does not mean that the door will be open the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then it says but we all not we some we all is the heritage of all with faces unveiled it says we behold him as in a glass when the cattle of Jacob continued to look at the speckled wood they gave birth after what they saw it matters what you see Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see it's more than hearing so that I will see there are things when you see you will never be at that level again it's impossible hallelujah please sit down the prayer to see is a real prayer Ephesians chapter 3 let's look at verse 8 and 9 apostle paul was given a grace and the character of that grace is that every time he is ministering people must see he says unto me who i am less than the least of all saints is this grace so it's a grace that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ verse 9 and to make all men see to make all men see it's more than an information that's a lecture it's more than mental enlightenment it is an engracing of the spirit that brings people into the reality of what is being talked about let me tell you there is nothing more frustrating for a believer to be aware of a dimension in the spirit and never enter it I know restoration is possible I know speed is possible I know God can change my life and then you have all of this accumulated awareness and your life never testifies that you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good the experience of the kingdom is something that you must partake of it's not just to believe in it alone one day it must become your experience the Bible calls such people living epistles as I would always teach so that if someone forgot his Bible at home he doesn't feel bad when he sees you because he can continue reading what he stopped reading through your life you are a living epistle are we blessed yes. so when we see him high and lifted then we become what we are seeing that's why i sang that song high and lifted above the limitations above the vicissitudes of life the things you are learning and you are about to learn are not opinions opinions are dangerous they are subject to a man's experience but the word of god has been vetted tried seven times this is God's instrument of victory he says I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up number one number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation the word of God is not an opinion it's not subject to a debate no when it has to do with walking with God creativity is not required obedience is what is required when it has to do with exercising dominion that's when you need creativity so the assignment is not to guess what you think is the formula the assignment is to stand in the ancient parts Jeremiah 6 and verse 16 and to ask wherein is the way that good way and that when you find it walk in it and you will enter your Sabbath Jeremiah 6 16 a man can enter his Sabbath in experience by finding the way there is a way to restoration there is a way to open doors I made up my mind years ago that I will not guess my life hoping I am right 
there is a way the Bible says that cement right I can think that is a leather until I touch it and I find out it's a bag my perspective told me it was a leather you can think this way leads to prosperity to grace and follow it and mentor others to follow you then after 20 years you find out you were wrong and let me tell you something with life when you fail you go back no matter how old you start again my greatest fear is not satan my greatest fear if at all any is to discover that what i call light were darkness open my eyes let me see Will you open my eyes, let me see, it's my prayer Lord, will you open my eyes, let me see, you're the light of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes, let the Bible says the kingdom please understand that the kingdom of God is akin to a treasure a lost coin are we together that a man is holding a treasure in form of a coin and then it is missing in a room and the first thing he does is to look for light light and then a broom and he began to sweep that room and he found that coin that is missing the coin is in the room but it doesn't mean you can see it so he had to light a lamp and then search for it the truths that we are looking for are not missing they are not far but it will take the illumination of the spirit it says in your light we see light are we blessed already matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 blessed be the name of the lord matthew 16 and verse 19 jesus is still teaching and jesus makes a very interesting statement and says and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom so the kingdom is akin to a house with many doors each room controlling dimensions of spiritual possibilities and he says i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven let me tell you the difference very quickly between the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god represents every sphere where the influence of god can reach that includes the heaven of heavens that includes the earth that includes hell where can i hide from your presence so the kingdom of god represents everywhere the sphere of god's government god's influence can extend to and that is everywhere but the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of god where the governing influence of the christ in experience has been allowed to find expression that is what is called the kingdom of heaven are we blessed yes remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is done in heavens so heaven represents god's idea god's portrait everywhere can become heaven when what is done in heaven is done there are we together now yes so the kingdom of heaven represents every sphere i give you an instance the entire country nigeria as a federal republic is called the federal republic of nigeria is that true so from sambisa to to uh, uh maiduguri to lagos to portacot it's all the property of the federal government but there are still portions of this nation that are under contention are we together there are groups of individuals for instance down north sambisa who are attempting to lay claim on the sovereignty of the nation it is now the assignment of the army to stamp the fact that it is a federal republic so you cannot necessarily call sambisa for now a place that is fully under the influence of the government of nigeria but it should be but it is not 
so it says forever oh lord thy word is settled not everywhere is settled in a particular domain of your kingdom our assignment therefore is that it be done in earth as it is done and the first earth is you this earthen vessel that it be done in you first before your territory are we blessed and so he says to achieve that i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and that with those keys whatsoever thou shalt bind now this has brought a lot of controversy in the body of christ whether it is bound in heaven first or bound in the earth and that's not our subject of discussion now that whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever thou shalt lose the word bind and lose is not a demonic word it's just a word that means to authorize or to hinder to prohibit or to allow that there are keys that a man can possess that grants you authority to open and shut doors hallelujah fear dies when you hold keys when you stand before a door and you do not have the key you will be afraid but once you possess the key there is no need for fear again are we together now so god is by this teaching not only bringing us to a point of revelation and dominion but he's taking away fear did you know that many people medical people here would tell you that even young people today the sheer level of stress and all kinds of psychological problems that come as a result of fear fear of the future will i prosper will i die no god cannot design an intelligent god cannot design people to live in that level of of um that that level of of uncertainty i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child see now asking will i be blessed will people favor me will lagos open up for me and you are just hoping let me tell you the the way many believers live people should not be born again watching you because the the way you live is they are better off living based on their own philosophies the haphazardness the gaps in our conviction is too much there must be a level of certainty 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 can i be sure that you will be blessed or do we just hope and watch what happens that's terrible can i be sure ministry will grow or will well let's try and see no we're not we're not working with probabilities this is a god that is exact very exact the challenge many times is we do not have the keys or we do not know how to use the keys praise the name of the lord so the bible tells us that there are mysteries called the keys of the kingdom luke eleven fifty two. that these keys represent a body of truth a body of truth Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 please let's read it if you can see it one to read woe unto you lawyers uh-huh for you have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourself and them that were entering you hindered so the keys of the kingdom are the keys of knowledge there is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints please understand this not every spiritual 
information is necessary and responsible for your growth just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it is useful that's why the bible speaking says i have many things to tell you now he says but ye cannot bear them how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible mandates the holy spirit to guide the saints into all truth that means he will select the truths that are applicable to your life and destiny there's a lot of useless spiritual knowledge that has no place as far as the victory of the saints is concerned ever learning the bible says but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so we must be careful just because an information is scarce you are privy to a scarce spiritual information does not mean you have authority so we continue to brag around a lot of useless spiritual information respectfully speaking and most of them do not sustain the ability to reveal and glorify christ in our lives there are many people for instance who have been around the airport for nine years ten years they've never flown but they are there they can show you every room they can show you they can show you a way to get the ticket even if you don't have another you, they they understand all the skill but they have never in experience entered a plane now that's a very frustrating experience they snap around it they talk around it they draw it they tell you what conference is happening in the airport but they never leave many believers are like that I know God can restore they say I know God can dispute believe me the other day they testified in my presence I'm making you angry this morning for a reason because you see until you are provoked you will not be tired of where you are it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night my Bible says only to eat the bread of sorrow it is only God that can give his beloved sleep so when we sustain this dimension of intelligence then you will open these doors why will the doors be open because like we shared yesterday the treasures are within and once you open those doors you can access those things let me tell you this I believe in results so I really believe in results the end of all argument is results results have a convincing power we were not designed to use only words to convince when moses spoke a little he stopped talking let the rod continue speaking if all you use is your voice and your mouth alone you are not doing much there must be something about your life that keeps talking even when you are silent hallelujah that you can demonstrate to people that this god is alive ah. i looked around and suddenly realized that you've been so good to me your mercies are everlasting unto the hills then he asked a question whence cometh my help other people have many ways they outsource help he says as for me my help I can't generalize it but my help cometh from the Lord listen the maker 
the lord is not only a builder he is the maker it's not only heaven and earth that he makes he makes men too the lord the maker like you see a man and say this man is made oh that when men are made he is called the lord the maker the maker of anointed men the maker of prosperous men the maker of men under open heavens and open doors the maker hallelujah so there is an exact body of truth please do not forget this please do not forget this everything in the kingdom is controlled by knowledge the keys that open door are a specific body of truth look up please there is an exact body of knowledge that controls the economic system of the kingdom the economic system of the kingdom is not haphazard it is controlled by exact specific knowledge that can be understood and their operation can be scientific there is a synergy there is a sequence there is repeatability two words is very interesting in that scripture he says my people my people four verse six Hosea my people my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shall no longer be a priest a priest is a mediator a representation you cannot represent me because you do not sustain my knowledge my viewpoint knowledge is very powerful believers hear me knowledge is very powerful there is a lot there is a lot of um, ignorance and then there is a lot of guessing let me tell you this the challenge sincerely speaking with many believers is not that we are necessarily ignorant we have not studied the truths of the kingdom enough to know which is responsible for which results are we together yes so someone for instance let me have any gentleman anybody come my good friend again watch this this gentleman may be in trouble now and here's how his prayer will look like it will be a combination of the blood of jesus the fire of the holy ghost touching and agreeing communion are we together the name of jesus quoting his scripture now he is not even sure which should produce which result he just tries anyone and the danger is one will work and if something works that you don't understand how the result came the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully are we blessed yes so he just feels that there's a pain no in the name of jesus i reject it then he takes communion wonderful he calls the name of jesus he tells somebody he has oh prophet prophesy now he does not even know that all these dimensions in the kingdom have specific outcomes there is what to do if you want to rise financially there is what to do when you are attacked there is what to do when you are making progress there is what to do when you are already successful which one do you not know it represents the door that stands close before you i hope you are not offended that i'm pushing you a little because i want you to walk out of this place with confidence so you go back home and say see let's stop this nonsense we're doing sit down i know exactly what is wrong this this approach of random hoping that one will work uh -uh. based on this case this is the spiritual law that connects it read your bible every time people lost things only the prophetic restored business never restored anybody alas master for it was borrowed and the prophet said where fell it when the donkey was missing it was samuel that prophesied it back that means when you lose money when your company goes down there's no point sitting down and say we will start again you are going to go through the same experience the prophetic must be the ladder you climb first are you seeing just this this revelation is deliverance for many people The Bible says, for instance, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. It says, there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. 
there are laws in this kingdom that control specific outcomes apostle what i need is more of the anointing of the holy ghost in my life there are spiritual laws that govern the anointing desire is only one of them the bible says through desire proverbs 18 and verse 1 i think it says a man having separated himself he says seek it and intermediate with all wisdom but desire alone is not the key to him to impartation when your cup is empty it's a report card telling you that what is on your head is small the bible said thou anointest my head with oil and i see what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is empty the fault is not the cup the fault is not the business the fault is not the location i'm staying in lagos the fault is something that is not yet on my head are we together Herbalists have all kinds of shrines and right from that shrine they've not felt a need to move anywhere people come from everywhere with their dignity and walk backward and go to the Habalis because he has something that is treasure there spiritual laws are powerful they control exact results longevity will not happen by hoping there are spiritual laws that are responsible now please if you've lost a loved one don't feel bad but we continue to mature through the supply of spiritual knowledge are we together now this death you see that people fear death itself has a spirit and there are people it fears because spirits there is an emotional component to them truly let me tell you there are people who will pass death and death will pass them too it is not it is not as vicious as we look it is our ignorance that gives it that might there are exact spiritual laws that control it pastor sir the greatest need of believers is favor as far as excelling in life is concerned believe me when i tell you this you can know whether the favor of god is upon your life or not i hope you know that favor is not breakthrough no the difference between favor and breakthrough is the frequency of occurrence if it happens only once it's not favor it's breakthrough it must happen again and again regardless of surrounding circumstances exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 please look up is someone learning something this morning exodus 3 21 please help us media and then we'll read it together proverbs i mean exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 this is the biblical litmus test for favor ready please read and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation financial emptiness emptiness in terms of support there is an explanation now notice the worst person to receive favor from is an egyptian because they would not bless israel yet when favor is on you even the egyptians cannot withdraw their resources towards you your relatives are even connected to you by blood why are they rejecting you when an egyptian that is not connected to an israelite act enemies still bless them overnight is god speaking to us and i will give you the keys of the kingdom a body of exact spiritual truth that you will do business with and watch yourself transit from one dimension of grace to the other that people look at your life and say last week you were not like this what happened between last week and this week and you tell them two things one i came for a conference a convention and while i sat down an information was supplied me and a grace came over me and with these twofold operations i went back and look my life now a testimony of wonder i hope you believe what i'm telling you it shall come to pass that when ye shall go you shall not go empty favor insists that you are not empty 
it will shake people from the left and the right of any region to make sure you have all sufficiency the Bible says God is able to make all grace abound towards us he says so that ye having all sufficiency in all things he says you will abound unto good works it is impossible to do certain levels and dimensions of kingdom exploits when you are empty empty in your mind empty in your hands so when we talk about open doors we're talking about keys that are controlled with knowledge knowledge having the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that is responsible for exact outcomes exact outcomes colossians 1 verse 9 thank you colossians 1 and verse 9 for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge knowledge of his will number two that ye might be filled with all wisdom number three that ye might be filled with spiritual understanding so it is important that we obtain knowledge and this morning the few minutes that i have i just want to share with you two keys of the kingdom i pray in the name of jesus that someone will hold these keys and this afternoon may it open doors for you please lay your hands on your head and cry in prayer my understanding open up open up open up Please pray. Someone pray. Nila Baruzia Sabra Nidia Nadavaladaba. Raka Baruzia Dada Baruzia Taba. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of faith. Write it down. The first key of the kingdom we explore is the law of faith. Numbers 23 and verse 19, please. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Jesus. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. No. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, is there no one like you? No one like you, Father, no one like you, Master. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Listen up. Faith is a law in the spirit. It's a key that can open doors. The Bible says God is not a man 
he became a man but he is not a man god is not a man that he should lie he says nor the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it hath he spoken and shall he not make it good let me tell you what this means that means before god speaks he checks if he can do it that if god cannot do it he will not say it so everything god says he has checked within himself to find out whether the capacity to make it happen is there or not are we blessed faith listen faith is not believing believing is part of faith faith is not believing are we together now faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction about god and the integrity of his word the name given to the action you take as proof of your conviction conviction is not faith conviction leads to faith many people continue to say they have faith uh -uh. conviction plus actions of obedience is what equals faith please understand this every dimension in the kingdom commits god at the instance of your faith your action not just your knowledge are we together now faith is very powerful hebrews 11 starts by saying now faith is the substance he says of things hoped for it says the evidence the tangibility of things not seen things not seen things not seen that means for instance i have some money here if if you want a bottle of water and i give you a thousand naira i did not give you water but i gave you the substance of what you are hoping for this is the evidence that you have water you take it to the shop and exchange it nobody will ask you how old you are to buy the water nobody will say are you a male or female are you Igbo or yoruba once you can bring this it can purchase that which you desire so that the everything on earth has a price tag are we together now and that faith is currency you can take it to the marketplace of life and exchange it for victory and exchange it for speed and exchange it for things that have no business coming into your life so that when you have faith you begin to rejoice that even though i have not built the house this is the money for the house it's called faith it's a spiritual currency that we transact with in the realm of the spirit it says by it the elders obtained a good report then the bible begins to say verse 3 through faith we understand he's telling you the formation of the cosmos he says through faith we understand that the walls were framed those realities were already in existence in the realm of the spirit the technology of their transportation to this realm was faith that they were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear faith the bible in several instances in scripture habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 romans 1 verse 17 galatians 3 verse 11 hebrews 10 38 the bible says the just shall live by faith everybody say it please the just shall live by faith habakkuk 2 4 romans 1 17 they all say the same thing galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 that in this kingdom the just lives by faith look at me please there are no earthly guarantees over anything there is no guarantee humanly speaking that you'll be successful there is no guarantee that an uncle will help you men can change i can promise you and say as soon as you finish come to me and one year before you finish i die i'm not bad i'm just human your destiny helper can relocate to america just when no guarantee anywhere your guarantee is faith 
now faith is an equation and very quickly i will run you through it the first revelation of faith the first or the first equation is an encounter with something god has said the basis of faith is an encounter with something god has said if god has not said it there's no point believing it it will not happen it is only his word that controls realities remember he upholds all things by the word of his power so your journey to faith is first to find out what god has said even doubt comes based on what god has said satan wants to know what god has said are we together so it's important for you to understand faith what has god said i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end what has god said the path of the justice as a shining light it shines ever brighter unto the perfect day what has god said if they obey and serve me they will spend their years in prosperity their days in pleasure what has god said it's important for you to know what god has said concerning you concerning your family what has god said concerning your home psalm 112 blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever what god has what has god said deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth are we together now and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you this is what god has said what has god said let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea the fowl of the air over everything that creepeth and in doing so hebrew says he left nothing that was not under the subjection of man many believers do not know what god has said that's why their faith faith is not built by reading newspapers and magazines as important as they are the basis of faith is what god has said an encounter with the written word an encounter with the spoken word there are things that god told pastor amos Fenwa, for instance about this ministry it becomes the things that luke chapter 1 tells us that there are things that are most surely believed most surely believed there are things God told me that becomes the basis of my faith. He told Joshua, he said, no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. It's a revelation. So when the captain, the angel came, Joshua was going to remove his sword and kill him. If that angel did not explain, he would have been surprised. Because God's word already said, nobody will be able to stand against you. Who are you to come? There is a word that protects me. What has God told you? God told you if you come to Lagos, I will ensure you will not beg. Why are you begging? It means there is something about the word you've ignored. Listen, Satan only comes to you when the word comes. If the word does not come to you, he has no. there's nothing to fight it was until god spoke to man when satan came and met eve he said what did god say not how are you not what do you want to eat not have you explored other trees all i'm interested in is what did god say the moment the father spoke over jesus satan came and said um, um if you are the son of god it's a diplomatic way to say prove it if you are sure of that voice I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded please hear me there are things God has said concerning us this book is full of promises and truths backed by the integrity and the jealousy of God there are things God has said that God is able to pick a man from the dunghill you are not the first to come from a background where you were staying under under a, a roofless house 
it is not news in this bible god lifted men from nothing and took them anywhere it will not start from you you are not the first to have an empty account no sir you are not the first to be jobless no sir you see the things that are written aforetime the bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that if he did it yesterday he would do it again are we together faith persuasion that in a strange land god lifted joseph to become a prime minister in a strange land he lifted daniel to become a prime minister through the reign of three kings you are not the first to prosper or attempt to prosper in a land that is strange the bible already shows what god can do with such men apostle nobody likes me there was once a time a man called jabez the mother bore him in sorrow you are not the first but the bible starts that book with the end of the story and jabez was more honorable that means people can change their state what is this bad luck on my life that drives good things and then you go to scripture because what i say to one i say to all you can open it there and say my name is not jabez but my experience makes me look like jabez and i can change it what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed he touched his thigh and he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place peniel the face of god is god blessing us listen to me my brothers and my sisters god does not lie our lives are testimonies that when god talks to you take him serious when god tells you this year i am lifting you don't sit down hope and say god are you aware that much is no 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 that kind of talk is unbelief did you not hear that god is able to transit a people overnight it's in your bible by this time tomorrow what is it about listen god is not scratching his head wondering what to do with your life your problem is only an emergency to you not to heaven please help me you are who you are yesterday help me today I'm